right, this is Davis, and I'm talking with Don Armstrong from U.S. Radiator here at SEMA. Why don't you tell us a little bit about U.S. Radiator? U.S. Radiator's been uh, in the business, in the aftermarket of making uh, replacement radiators for, well, back in the day we made them for everything. And then uh, the business, the, the hot rod restoration market started to grow, and we noticed that um, the businesses were growing rapidly. Uh, people like Dan Chuck and Year One, and Classic Industries, and Ecklers, and they were coming along strong, and, and there were people who actually specialized in certain types of cars. So, and we were building a lot more of that stuff. So, about the uh, mid 80s, we've been doing this since the 60s. We've been a member of SEMA for about 28 years. And about the mid 80s, we decided, you know, there was enough volume and enough business in the hot rod and restoration to keep our little company happy. What separates us from everyone, everyone else in the aftermarket for this type of uh, the vintage radiators is that we've tooled everything. Uh, we diced out the tanks to look original. Everything looks original. If you look, aluminum radiators have come along very big in the last oh, 10, 15 years. And uh, basically, if you look around, at everyone who's selling aluminum radiators are claiming to manufacture. Most are made in China. But those who are claiming to manufacture are just bending up boxes, and they really don't look like they fit the car. We, we pretty much, we, we struggle now to find new things to tool. Last year we tooled a 62 Cadillac with air, which was a one-year only car. I was just going to say, yeah, 62, you just pulled that one out. Yeah, we, uh, and we did uh, the early 60s Chrysler products, the uh, 61 to 3 uh, Valiants. And, and what's big right now, and I don't know why, but for the last year and a half, Vans. Bands are going. Bands <laughs> really? are going. Bands, bands yeah. are coming back, and I, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, a guy comes in and he's got, I've got three bands, man. There's got a Ford, I got a Dodge, I got. And so, we've tooled a couple of Dodge van style. So that's vans are, not the same platform as like a full size car or a pickup truck. Usually, um, in the later ones, they're they're like pickup trucks, but in the early '60s, they were more like. Um, a Dodge van, for example, was the same top tank as a Plymouth Valiant um, because it set be the engine set between the, the seats, seats right. and so it was a very narrow radiator. So they used a Plymouth Valiant for that kind of stuff. So and we didn't we didn't really have the tooling for that because we just you know you don't get a lot of calls for them. Quick question for you: What should a person be looking for as far as buying a radiator? I mean, what should they look at as far as you mentioned quality and the tooling? If it's restoration type of a vehicle then you're looking at something that looks original and fits dead on dead on that everything has to line up these cars the old cars were tough i mean no two core supports were made the same back in the 30s and okay. 40s um 50s 57 chevys uh -huh. we sell a lot of those and and gm used you know fender washers to mount them because no two core supports were exactly alike so you know, some of our customers put those washers in there with them to, to make up that difference. We can only make them one way. I mean, we can make them several ways. 32 Fords is a perfect example. I make 23 versions of a 32 Ford. The guys, it's a car guy's, it's a car guy's world, and everybody wants their way. And you know, they might channel the car, they might chop the car, they might use a flathead, they might use, they might use an LS motor, they might right. use so all of this comes into consideration when we're making the radiators because the plumbing is going to be different. And we make three different types of cores. Okay. Um, the 60s style core was around from 58 to oh about 84, something like that. It was it was a steadfast, we call it a standard automotive core. It's a half inch fin. In the 80s, the Japanese came to town with these tiny little fins in radiators and they were one row radiators on turbocharged V6 and we thought we were going to be really busy. Well, it turns out that they figured out that the heat moves away from itself, and it moves towards the center of the fin and the core, and once it gets out into the center, the air pulls it off. What they did is they went to this real small fin. You see how small that fin that is? That is tight. Compared to, say, this fin? Exactly. All right? We got twice as many heat transfer points in this type of core. Heat transfer points is where you let the heat get out of the radiator. So the Japanese taught us this in the 80s. So we went to a high efficiency in the 80s, and then we went to an optimum core, which is what this one is, quarter-inch fin. It creates other problems we have to deal with, like airflow. But when, it, when, you, when a guy says, I have a 1,000 horsepower motor, and I want to drive it down to the, to the donut shop in the morning, um, 
this is what he needs because he's not going to get up, you know, put enough air through it driving down the street to keep it cool. When the airflow stops, heat transfer stops. So we have to put, we use, we build a lot of shrouds and fan packages. I saw that. Um, we, we, we install them on the radiator. Mm -hmm. um, we build what we call a triple flow. This has got a notch in the tank so you can see inside of it, but right here is a, is a wall. All the water comes in here, comes across, hits a wall here, goes back up, comes over, hits a wall here, comes back down. We call it, call it the triple flow, and we've been making it for about 20 years now. We learned this from the guys racing sprint cars and midgets. They've got unlimited, seat, you got unlimited cubic inch motors, and they've got a tiny little postage stamp radiator up in the hood, and it's running cool at high RPMs. And we said, how do you do that? And they, they showed us the radiator. We cut it apart. It had walls in it. Um, so we started doing that. I started doing it for my buddies in the car club because it drops the temperature another 20 degrees. The only thing a radiator does is drop temperature from here to here. Right. And the, the, if you maximize this temperature drop from here to here, you maxim, you lower the, cool, the, the, the way the motor runs. You, you, you bring it down another 20 degrees with these walls. That's pretty impressive. It is. And, it, and so I, put it, I started using them in my hot rods. And then my buddies would go, how come that thing runs nice and cool? It's just sitting here in a, in a 120 degree day. And they told me, well, I got these walls in the radiator. So, yeah, well, make me one. And so pretty soon, there you we go. were making a lot of them. And your, your manufacturing facility is located where? We're in Vernon, just a suburb of Los Angeles. We've been there about 16 years. Prior to that, we were in another area of Los Angeles for about, you know, 30 We've been, I've been doing this for 45 years. Based in Southern California. Based in Southern California. Um, the doors are always open. Anyone anyone who sees this and wants to come in and look around, we'd we'll be glad to give you a little tour. It's, it's pretty interesting stuff, really. You know, I'm surprised that I've made a living doing this. I would have done it for nothing. It's fun. And, We're uh, playing with old cars all the time. Sounds like it. Sounds great. And uh, can you give us your website? USRadiator.com.